get in the middle of this anointing because I don't want to mess it up. But I feel like I'm supposed to share something, not necessarily, it might apply to somebody here, but I think most of us are on the same page. But I believe there's going to be, or there are, people that are either watching online or going to watch online. And you're saying, I don't understand that kind of praise and worship. It bothers me. So let me address that real briefly. First of all, you measure everything of God from your spirit. You measure the anointing. And you sense, does this feel like God? Get out of your head. I'm going to talk about that in just a second. Get out of your head. Does this feel like God? Is it peaceful? Is it restful? Is it God glorifying? Is my spirit at peace and rest with this? Because as believers, it should be. If the Holy Spirit is good with it, we need to learn to be good with it. No matter what our training has been, no matter what our teaching has been, we need to learn to be good with it. So number one, measure it from your spirit. Sense the anointing of it. And secondly, this is what I want to really make a statement on. A little while back, uh, Mary and I met with a believer who called us out on this kind of thing and why it happens at Word of Life and it's wrong. It's extreme emotionalism. And the chanting and the the wild dancing which by the way I think was beautiful that whole realm here's what we were told <clears throat> that's what they do in heathen countries that's what they do in witchcraft and Satan worship That's how they enter in. And they looked at me and they said, so what do you think of that? I said, do you know why they do that? The reason they do that is because it works. <laughs> See, you got to back up. Who created praise and worship? The devil is not a creator of anything. He just takes what God says, this is how it works, and he tries to pervert it and get it on himself. But he never created it. He just perverted it. And the individual said, but it, it just seems like people become almost like subdued into the spirit the spirit of the time and it's almost like the their mind gets taken over and it's it's like it's like they're 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 not really in control anymore I said exactly that's what it's supposed to do that's why they do it they do it to a different spirit they do it to a different God but where do you think they learned that they learned it from our God. That's right. So you have to understand, Satan is not a creative being. So anything he's doing is a counterfeit of something real. He said, well, I can see videos where they're doing Satan worship looks just like this. Exactly. And I can see videos where they're worshiping Almighty Jehovah God, and it looks just like this. Because he's the one who started it. That's right. They just took it. You say, why'd they take it? Because it's the only thing that works. It opens up to the heavens. It opens up to the spirit realm. It gets us beyond our physical into the realms of the spirit. It works. That's why they do it. 
But they didn't come up with it. Our God came up with it. So measure it by your spirit. Now, don't get, your, don't get too deep into your head, because sense and reasoning without the Holy Spirit is demonic, Paul said in Romans. Sense and reasoning without the Spirit is demonic. Don't get into your head too deep, or you're going to miss everything. You've got to follow the Spirit. So, Father, thank you. We worship you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And it's an honor to be in your presence. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. All right. Now that's really powerful. Pastor, that was really powerful. Um, that's confirmation because tonight I was going to talk on praise and worship. <laughs> Isn't that something? So he was, in, he was completely in the spirit. Amen. How you he better be. He's the man of the house. Come on. Amen. Uh, so the, um, the thing is, you know, <laughs> that's, that's so easy for me to follow right there. The reason why is because uh, God had just spoken to me recently about stoicism. How many heard of stoicism? And uh, it's, how many know that, let me just say it this way. The, they said that the people in the East are doing this, right? Where, where did all this stuff start at? Come on, y'all, amen. <laughs> so when it translated over here, something happened to it, right? Who made them the authority on what worship should be? These minds. Who made them the authority? Isn't that interesting that they would actually think that they could determine what's true worship based upon the type of things that people do when they worship. Um, man, God is so good. Right on. Somebody say right on. Right on. Hallelujah. All right, let me, just, let me just go here and talk a little bit about this before I, uh, we do any ministry tonight. And... Um, <clears throat> And that just fits so perfectly to what God was speaking to me about. Incredible. So it originates, uh, it originated in the Middle East. The worship originated in the Middle East. Amen. And then uh, Western, come on, amen, belief system became more of philosophy. Come on, y'all. Right? Uh, eloquence, uh, you know, the instruction, eloquence, philosophy, worship of the mind. Um, actually, how many have heard of John Eckhart? Uh, does deliverance, a lot of deliverance ministry. He actually preaches about Greek spirits. Amen. Somebody say Greek spirits. See, now we talk about the spirits over in the Middle East. Come on, the heathenistic spirits. Come on, amen. There are some Greek spirits too. And um, how many know God wants us to address those spirits as well? Uh, oh, my goodness. Glory to God. The Lord told me, <clears throat> he said, he told me there was a worship movement inside of me. Somebody say a worship movement inside. Now, how many understand this is one of the problems what we're having in the church today is that there is no real originality anymore in our local churches because everybody's patterning themselves after what's popular. Come on, y'all. Amen. And God never intended for the church to be carbon copies of each other because each one of us is uniquely different, so there should be something unique coming out of you. Amen? And how many know that? Now, I'm not trying to bring this up because I want to bring attention to any celebrity figures or whatever, but most of the people who end up making it really, really big, come on, in the world, in the secular realm, are the most unique crazy looking people you ever want to meet you know come on all right lady gaga for example come on y'all is anybody hear what i'm saying now how come the world can be original but the church has to be a copy of everybody how come the world can can set trends 
But the church, come on, amen, can't set any trends in the spirit. You know what that's telling us? That the enemy is trying to keep us in a box so that we cannot fulfill destiny. The world is capturing, come on, the world is being, the spirit of this world is capturing the hearts of the young generation with the originality and the unique, come on, uh, giftings and abilities in these people. Now, how many have heard of Aretha Franklin? Now, now, you know, this is, so, this is so powerful because just today I was dropping my son off, him and his wife off at the airport this morning, and they told me that they happened to, to see a movie about Aretha Franklin, and they said they were so grieved by the movie, and they said, don't watch it. They said, don't watch it. Now, watch, there'll probably be about five people in here that'll watch it just because I said don't watch it. But uh, they said, don't watch it. Don't watch the movie. They said it was so grieving, but they said, I will tell you what happened. They said she was 12 years old, and she was raped. And they showed her pregnant at 12 years old. Oh, my goodness. And guess how it happened? Her dad was a pastor of a church. Come on. He was a pastor of a church. And he was having parties at his house. Come on. After church services. With drinking. And, and, and you know what? Because what? He had religion. He didn't have the true experience. He saw the gift in his daughter. He wakes her up while she's sleeping, said, you want to come and sing for the people downstairs? He wakes her up to come and sing for the people, and she ends up later on getting raped by a man that came into the house, raped her. She ends up getting pregnant, 12 years old. So what did the devil do? He exploited, come on, amen her, and he took her gift. Y'all need to help me. And perverted her gift. Lucifer is a spirit of perversion. He perverts everything. So whenever we don't keep to the originality of what the Father revealed, come on, amen, we start, come on, letting, come on, these things like this Father should have been the protector. Come on, amen, of what? A worship movement in his daughter. Y'all need to help me. Come on, hallelujah. He wasn't a protector of the worship movement in his daughter. He allowed the devil, come on, amen, to pervert her, and she died. Come on, now listen, she died confused because she had a gift to sing in church, but she also had a gift to sing in the world, and she was, it was confusion there. And you know what? People would look at her, and they worship her and idolize her and say, wow, what a great singer. And they don't realize that she crossed over and was being used by the enemy to draw a generation of people into mixture and confusion. That's one of the reasons why worship should be handled by people who are, come on, amen, spiritually dedicated to God. To the point that they listen, my song, my voice, my talent, my gift, my ability belongs only to him. I'm not giving it to nobody else. You know, I made a commitment to the Lord that I was not going to sing any secular songs. Come on, somebody. Amen. amen. And so I, I kind of make fun about that because sometimes people ask me to do weddings and things like that. And I'd be like, I'd be wanting to go, your kingdom is greater than any other kingdom. And you reign. Yeah. I want to scream and stuff, you know, but the wedding would probably get messed up, you know, if I did that. Come on, amen. Well, everybody's made differently. Come on, somebody, amen. I'm made differently. Come on, amen. I'm not saying that somebody can't do it, but I'm just not, this is just not me. Come on, amen. Hallelujah. I could try to make myself do one of those love songs or something, but you know what? I feel like in my spirit, I'm called to take people into the presence of the Lord, and I want to I wanna protect that worship movement. Come on, somebody on the inside of me. Come on, amen. And God gave me a gift to activate worship inside of people. And therefore, when people criticize what's inside of me and they criticize what I do, it just makes me more, know more and more that it's the devil because he doesn't want, come on, what's in me to come forth. Now, how many know? Now, I grew up, I grew up uh, in, uh, in South Minneapolis. Amen. How many know South Minneapolis can be rough sometimes? And, and, uh, but I grew up in South Minneapolis, and uh, when I was in high school, there was an entertainer in our school. His name was Prince. How many understand know who that one I'm talking about? And uh, pretty much he was known, amen, in the, come on, in the city, this young, come on, this young child who just rose to fame, come on, and he was pretty much uh, very confused, very, very confused. 
and uh, his father tried to commit suicide. Uh, he, he was actually, um, you know, privy to that or I guess came in on it or something, something on that line. I don't know the full story, but I do know this. It messed him up. And his father neglected him to the point that he dedicated all of himself to music. And that's why he learned all those instruments. And they said he could play almost any instrument. Now, what happened was a demon spirit entered into him and it changed him because what did he start doing? He started dressing like the principality that was controlling him. The spirit was manifesting something in the, from the spirit realm into the natural realm. The creativity was coming out, but it was coming out of a spirit that perverted him. Because why? He was a man, but it made him look like a woman. Or it made him look like he was both man and woman. Can somebody say antichrist? You see, so the Lord began to talk to me about this protecting his worship movement. And how the worship movement has got to be sacred and holy. And how many know a lot of our, our, our worshipers are, are selling out? They are selling out. They're getting, come on, amen, uh, uh, up there. They're getting invited to, to, to uh, share and do music on, on different secular shows and TV shows and whatever. And they've gotten up there and they couldn't even, come on, stand for Jesus. Come on, amen there. They couldn't do it. When you ask them questions, point blank, they couldn't answer the questions. Because they were afraid of the people, come on, the people's opinion, the popular opinion, and they realized that they would be rejected and that they may even lose a little bit of their fame and a door may shut for them. But how many know that if you're not persecuted, come on, amen, and if you're not suffering, oh, y'all need to help me, you are not entering into the kingdom of God. So most of the time when we don't want to uh, stand, listen, um, just because you get money doesn't mean that God is with you. Just because somebody come on, wants to sign you doesn't mean God is with you. Just because you get a promotion, come on, amen, in some way, doesn't mean God is with you. The devil will promote you too because he's got an agenda. So we have got to realize that God wants us to protect the worship movement. And the Lord said, he said to me, he said, he, he actually convicted me. He says, I want you to stop singing so much. He says, stop singing everybody else's songs every time you get up. Oh, y'all, come on. Amen. He said, I want you to spend 90% singing what I've given you and 10% singing what other people sing. And, and, and as he spoke it to me, I realized what's going on. He was saying, how can you come into what I have if you keep on copying everybody else? The originality is being birthed in the church. There are worship leaders in this house that have a unique anointing upon them. And there's definitely a Chenaniah, which is a chief musician or somebody that's anointed specifically to lead people into the presence of the Lord or a psalmist. God gives you a unique sound and he wants to cause that sound, of course, to be duplicated. But realize he's still going to cause the originality on the inside of each one of us to come forth for his glory. God's not going to just let one person come on, be the only one doing it, come on and flowing. But the Lord said, I want you to spend more time singing the songs I've given you. And um, for years, I struggled with, with, the worship, with the worship area because when I would go places and I would sing and minister, people would try to control my gift. You know, for example, they would want me to do worship for their church. Come on, amen. Uh, worship for their events. Praise the Lord. Come on, somebody, amen. How many know that and the highest bidder will win? Y'all need to catch this, what I'm trying to say here. If you don't know what God's called you to do, the highest bidder is going to win. How is the spirit involved in that? You see, people, they're playing the games of the world. And the Lord started telling me, he says, no. He says, don't let one man offer me such and such and such and tell me this and this and that. And he said, man, I'm telling you, if you, can, if you become a part of our church, we'll do this. We'll do this for you. We'll do that. We'll do this. We'll do that. And the Lord spoke to me and said, now, that is not my will. Don't do it. Don't do it. You're going to miss it. You're going to miss what I'm wanting to do. You know what, what they wanted me to do? They started trying to tell me what to sing. They started trying to tell me which songs to release and what style they liked and what they wanted me to do. How many of you hear what I'm saying? They started trying to manipulate it, control it, make it fit to their culture. And the Lord said, no, you are one who's going to birth a culture. Come on and worship. You're not called, come on, to be confined to a culture. I want you to create a culture of worship, kingdom worship. We got enough repeats, come on, going on. We need somebody that's going to do something that's brand new. Praise the Lord. So I, I would struggle with it, and the Lord told me. And, um, 
And he, 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 this was so powerful because some of you probably heard me talk about this before, but I went to Pakistan and uh, uh, with uh, Anwar Fazel, his ministry, you know, they reached lots of people, lots of people. I mean, there was over 60,000 people there, and I got a chance to lead worship in that atmosphere. And you know what really was a compliment for me? The pastor's wife and the pastor said that they had, they said to, uh, to the leader that I was traveling with, they said, he's really anointed. That's what they said. He's really anointed. Wait a minute, that's a pretty strong statement to make when you got 60,000 people you're ministering to and you can pick out one individual that's up as leader and you say, he's anointed. How many know I'd rather have that compliment, come on, amen, than any time? Come on, that the anointing. How many know we need to cherish the anointing of God, the presence of the Lord upon our lives? When, and so when, 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 when they said that he's anointed, the Lord spoke to me. He said, now see, now see, they don't know how to receive you. They don't know how to receive you because they knew you were anointed, but they didn't know how to utilize you in that atmosphere because they were so used to certain types of style of music and culture, and you were changing the atmosphere when you started the worship, and they didn't know how to flow with you because it was changing the atmosphere. So when you said, you know, recognize, check it out of your spirit if it's anointed, if the anointing is there. If you have the Holy Spirit, you should be able to discern whether the anointing is on a person when they're worshiping. You should be able to distinguish that. And so when, when, the, Lord, when the Lord did that, uh, I said, okay, God, this is powerful. So I could feel this, you know, this little fight going on in the atmosphere while I was there. And, uh, and I, I walked up to this lady who was leading the, uh, she would actually be a, she was a translator. She would translate for all the preachers. She's really, really get good at it. She's really good at it. Amen. And, you know, when, you, when, you're, when you're ministering to thousands and thousands of people and, you're, and somebody, you're translating for somebody to thousands and thousands of people, you got to be good. How many know what I'm saying? And so I said, to her, I says, how did you get this job, you know, of translating for all these, these ministers that they come in and, and do this? And she says, well, I started off working with the children, and then I went from the children, and I started doing helps ministry work and stuff like that. And then I was promoted. And watch what she said. I was promoted. I went to worship. I was promoted from worship to this position. So then the Lord spoke to me. He said, now, now it was so powerful. And the woman, she didn't mean anything. She, it was no, it was not, come on, amen. Uh, anything because it was like the enemy was trying to put me down how many do you know what I'm saying um you, you see what I'm saying um I was promoted from worship are y'all catching this I was promoted from worship to this position and you know when she said it the Lord spoke to me so clear he said what if Lucifer thought did y'all catch it he said what if Lucifer thought to be promoted from worship was what you needed to have done. And then I said, wait a minute, Lord, I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it as clear as day. Worship is on the same level as preaching. Y'all need to help me. Come on. Amen. Worship is just as important as somebody getting up, delivering a word, teaching and, and, and preaching to the people of God. Worship is not just a preliminary to entertain the audience until the preacher gets up. Y'all need to help me. Come on, somebody. You, because most people think of worship being, come on, amen, a time of preliminary. Uh, hey, get up there and sing a song real quick. The preacher's going to come sing a song, get, get, to get the atmosphere going, and then we'll get the preacher up there. No, 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 no. What if the Holy Spirit wants to come in like he did in Chronicles and in Kings where the glory of God began to fill the house and the priest couldn't even do their job? Because the worship broke out, come on, and the glory of God began to roll in, and nobody could do their job in the temple. They couldn't even finish because the glory of God started manifesting. The Lord said the anointing on you is for bringing in the glory. It's for bringing in the atmosphere and changing the spiritual climate. Come on, amen. And when you minister my word, it, your ministry will be as, he says, your song and your word, your song and your word will be as one. How many realize that God wants to be as one? intimacy with the Lord come on amen and so God says you have a high level ministry here but guess what here's what the devil does the enemy wants to get in and bring contamination to the movement of God go to Genesis 3 let me show you the scripture real quick here praise the Lord anybody get anything out of this or am I just up here talking praise the Lord all right I heard I heard a veteran say that's very good that's good you a veteran in the spirit <laughs> in both ways or just uh, 
And my goodness, they had a veteran say, yeah, you, you, it's a good word. Amen. You know when you get the veteran saying it's a good word, you can keep on going. Come on, somebody. Amen. <laughs> Genesis 3, verse 8. Look at this. After they had eaten of the tree, it says, after they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord called unto Adam, and here's what he said to him. Where art thou? Let me ask you guys a question. God knows everything, right? <laughs> so, so what do you think he was saying when he says, Adam, where art thou? Uh, I mean, I'm sure God could say, there you are. <laughs> you know, I'm sure God, come on, amen, knew where Adam was at. No. Amen. Adam, where art thou? He was calling him to the forefront come on, amen, to stand and be accountable for what he had done. And he did not want to come to the forefront. Come on, somebody, amen. How many understand what I'm saying here? I'm not coming to the forefront. Now, here's what God told me. He said, there are many in the body of Christ who are hiding amongst the trees of the garden and will not be counted, will not be summoned forth, will not allow God to call them, come on, amen, to the forefront to fulfill their purpose and destiny. Adam represents a father. Somebody say to me, God is searching for fathers. God is searching for fathers. He's looking for fathers. How many realize that our greatest epidemic in the earth is fatherlessness? And, and the center of all of our problems is fatherlessness that's why the bible talks about in malachi the hearts of the fathers will be turned to the children and the children to the fathers our greatest problem is fatherlessness so the lord is restoring fathers and he says i'm making you a father in the realm of worship how many realize there are people who need to be covered in the realm of worship do you realize that if a lot of these worship leaders had proper covering y'all need to help me Instead of being, watch this, allowed to just shine because they have a gift and put up and, and, and promote it and not developed any character. Y'all need to help me. Not trained and not spoken to, not corrected, not rebuked. Come on, not dealt with. Come on, amen. They wouldn't be in the trouble they're in now. Come on, in the body of Christ. And, and they would not have left the Lord. How many have heard of a man by the name of Ray Bolts? Anybody remember what happened to Ray Bolts? I mean, he came out with that song, thank you for giving to the Lord. I was a life, come on, amen, that you what? Changed. He sang this song, and these were these stories made up. They were very, and the Lord started showing me, he said, that song is very soulish. Even though it's a good song, it's very soulish. I knew it back there when he was singing it. He said, it's a really soulish song. It gets, it makes people cry. They're in the service. I was a life that you changed. They would cry, you know. And the Lord said, it's very, very soulish. Now, this is a different type of soulish. It was a manipulation because I'm going to tell you what happened after that. <laughs> no, that's not, but that's a good one, though. <laughs> Should we take an offering pretty soon here, or what are we going to do? No, I'm playing. Here's what happened. He came out saying he was gay. Left his wife and all his children. Oh, y'all need to help me. He fell off the scene. You don't hear nothing about him anymore. His songs are not even played anymore. Nobody thinks about his songs anymore. But when he was out at first, his songs were hot. They were on, I'm telling you, they were on the chart. They was, come on, people love their songs. Each one of them had, they were powerful. But when he began, come on, amen, he probably, he probably did not get fathered properly. And because of that missing father image, come on, amen, and not that character and development, come on, the enemy got in there and perverted him, come on, and messed him up. Y'all yep. yep. just staring at me tonight. Okay, all right, I'm going <laughs> to. Praise God. The Lord said, I need fathers for this generation of worshipers. I need fathers for this generation of intercessors. How many know that a lot of intercessors get in trouble too because they ain't got no spiritual fathers and mothers? Amen? To guide them, they get really weird. 
Y'all know I'm preaching right now. They get really, really weird because they don't have no fathers and no, they don't have no mothers and fathers that will mentor them in the area of their worship, in the mirror of their prayers, and they get off. Like, like the guy who got up and, and, and I couldn't believe it. I was sitting on the front row, Elijah, and they were up singing, and all of a sudden that guy go, beat it, beat it. I mean, literally, he said, beat that sin, beat that sin. He was singing the Michael Jackson song in church. He broke out and moonwalked. Come on, somebody, right? Y'all need to help me. I was like sitting on the front row going, I am not getting in the spirit here. There is no move of the Holy Ghost. I don't sense any change, nothing. This dude broke out and started moonwalking in the middle, come on, of that service. And, and they had a soundtrack for him all set up with Michael Jackson's music. Come on, y'all. It was horrible. Look at the person and say, beat it. No, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. Beat that sin. <laughs> he said, beat that sin. He said, beat it. I said, we get, bro, you, you in the flesh, bro. That ain't, that's not the spirit. That's not the spirit. <laughs> Come on, somebody. I said, that's not the spirit, brother. We need people who will bring correction to us. Come on, amen. Sit us down. I took my daughter into church one time. Uh, one of my daughters, I took her to church. And, and I thank God she's spirit, mature and everything. My, some people from my old church asked me to come, and, and they were doing a, a, a midnight worship thing and music or whatever. And they asked me, they said, would you come and sing and worship with us? And I was doing this because of this guy, I grew up with this guy. He's a friend of mine. And we worship together. We would sing together. And we got off in there. I'm sitting in the back. This uh, uh, guy comes up. He had one of them hairstyles uh, that was like, you know, pointing like that. You know what I'm talking about? And, uh, and he had on this, <laughs> you know. And he had on this, uh, come on, this, this outfit that looked like it might have been a dress because it was hanging down like this. And then it was, come on, kind of like, you know, it, it kind of shaped a certain way. And this dude was up here and he got the mic and you would have thought that he was the most anointed person in the world. He was singing so good. It was so fire, man. It was so powerful. And, and my, my daughter looked at me. She says, Dad, something's wrong. Thank God my daughter has been discernment. Because I, I can see something was wrong, too. This young man was not fathered, and they kept exalting his gift and exalting him. And then a perversion entered in, and now they had to allow it to happen because now you can't rebuke him. You can't change him because if you do, he'll just run away from you. So just let him get up and sing. He'll go into the world. So let's keep, oh, let's keep the perversion in the church. How many realize it is going to go, they're going to go to the world anyway? And then because we've compromised, we've allowed that thing to come in. Therefore, our worship, even our worship singers, leaders, everybody in the worship department got to be pure. Y'all need to help me. I'm preaching right now. Everybody in the worship department got to be seeking God. Everybody in the worship department got to be laying on their face and seeking the Lord and seeking first his kingdom. We don't want nobody singing. Come on, that ain't pressing into God. Because if they got the wrong spirit, they're going to transfer it to the whole congregation. Oh, it happens. You'll see it happen. I went into one church uh, in, in Colorado years ago, and, and I could, they were receiving the offering, and I just said, I couldn't even walk down to the front because the whole choir was full of homosexual men. And I was trying to walk sideways, trying to keep, you know, to get to the, you know, yeah. praise the Lord. Y'all caught that. Praise God. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. <laughs> Look at him laughing. He's laughing. God's laughing. That thing was, it was bad. That atmosphere was horrible. They were up singing, spirit of perversion on all of them. I said, Lord, what is going on here? How did I get in here? What is going on in here? The Lord said, this is what it's come to. They've settled, come on, for a spirit of compromise in the worship. And how many know that God's coming to bring cleansing to the worship, come on, in the worship department? He's coming to bring cleansing to the, to, the, to the intercession department, the prayer. How many realize that prayer just needs just as much uh, purification as worship does? Amen. 
So worship and intercession are actually coverings, and they govern the movement of the Lord. And I, and I heard in my spirit that when we maintain, amen, worship and intercession, pure worship and intercession, it's going to make the move of God continue on. How many understand it's going to give longevity to the, to the move of God? If we want to see the move of God, we got to get strong worship and strong intercession, come on, in our church, and it has to be established. Now, one of the things is about this new song of the Lord that is coming forth right now in the day we're living, this new song of the Lord, we've got to get, come on, amen, our understanding of this, because I'm telling you what it's doing. The enemy is actually trying to keep us in the, what you call simulated worship, where we're, we're doing what everybody else is doing, and they, what they've done is they replaced, come on, amen, the, the worship, come on, in the church with a simulation, come on, of worship. Now, let me explain what I'm saying when I say that. When, when, you know when they started bringing in, how many remember when they started bringing in fog machines? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Uh, there's no fog machines in here, is there, Pastor? I just wanted to make sure I didn't. I, praise God. I, I, I knew it. I just knew it. I just knew it. Praise God. I'm too skinny to wear skinny jeans. That's what I'm looking at my right now. <laughs> now watch this. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. A fog machine represents we're trying to get the glory of God in here. We can't get the glory the right way. So now we got to pump the glory in through a fog machine. Everybody up in the, front, in the front of the pulpit area dancing in the glory cloud, supposedly, right? Now, what if God wanted to bring his own glory in? Y'all need to help me. If God wanted to bring his own glory in, he wouldn't be able to do it. Because what? We got our own. We got our counterfeit operation. We got the flashing lights. Come on, amen. To mimic the lightnings at the throne of God. Come on, amen. We got the loud, you know, uh, the loud speakers that make boom, boom. And so people, come on, amen, are just, wow, God is really here. How many know that God's not really there? Because if God is really there, we would see more manifestations of miracles, healings, deliverances, people getting set free. We would see deliverances, people, come on, leaving sin alone, getting right with God. Come on, amen. I'm telling you, we got to get back to true worship again. We got to get back to repentance again. Come on, a true, come on, amen, a true intercession, true worship again. We got to get back to it. It was Matt Redman that, that, that wrote that song, uh, Back to the Heart of Worship, right? Coming back to the heart of worship. It's all about you. God is calling us to get back to it being all about him. Amen. All right, so um, Brother Brian, you want to share something real quick here? Let's see if the Lord, I know Brother Brian's got something because he came out of the music industry. Come on, amen. So let's hear for a little bit from Brother Brian and then we'll uh, see how the Lord directs us. Thank you guys for listening. Praise the Lord. Can we... Um can we um, give the Lord some, some praise for that word? Come on. Yeah. You know, I'm, I appreciate that. and I'm sure uh, the Lord does also. But even, even when we do that in church service, even a part of that is simulated. And, um, you know, I, I just think that as a body of Christ, you know, um, that we don't understand how God actually values the worship, the ministry, when, when his people are ministering to him. Amen. And because we always want to be ministered to, and we should, we, should, we should appreciate the ministry God ministers to us because that's what a father does. He ministers to his, his children. He feeds his children, he guides his children, he protects his children, he, he points his children in the right direction, he makes a way for his children, he helps his children, right? That's what a good father does. But one of the, the, the I, you know, one thing that really, I love it when I wake up in the morning, you know, and my children say good morning to me, you know? 
when they say good morning to me or when I come home and I get, hi, daddy, hi, daddy. I love it. It's one of my fav most favorite things. My son will sit at the table and he'll just yell, daddy. <laughs> it's, it's cute, right? It's cute, but I actually look forward to it. And what it does is it sets the course of how I'm going to interact with him. So he could, he could probably ask me for anything just because the way that he greeted me when he saw me was with so much excitement, so much anticipation, like, it's daddy. It's daddy. That's what, that's what we need to enter into in worship. Right? It's daddy. If we can do it for our natural father, how much more should we do it for our heavenly father? Come on, just one time. You know, just, just to break out of things that want to keep us mundane. Come on, just one time. Because I know in this house, I know the people here, there, there is real love and excitement. Hallelujah for daddy God. Come on, just one time. It's daddy. Now, that was good. That was about uh, probably about 40% of the room. <laughs> Come on, let's all yell. It's daddy. daddy. <laughs> so I didn't know what Apostle was going to preach on tonight. But so, you know, as I came down after the first couple songs, I heard the Lord say the word, worship and how worship was going to be so uh, integral to what God was going to do in this place. And I really believe that worship is so important to the end times. And believe me, the devil does also, right? Because really the mark of the beast gets down to worshiping the beast. I'm not saying don't take, I'm, I'm not saying go ahead and take a mark, right? So you can make sure you can you know, buy and sell, transact, all that. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying the real, the real issue with taking the mark is that, <laughs> is that it's about worship. It means that if you take the mark, you've taken the designation to no longer be someone that worships God, worships Jesus. Amen? It's really about worship. And I believe that as a people of God, We've got to allow worship to go beyond just our musical ability and, and our talents. It's got to come from a place that's purified in heart. Because even the music that's played and even the, through, through the talents, if it's not pure, like Apostle was talking about with Prince, if it's not pure, then believe me, all that, that's being released into the atmosphere are things that are not pure. And it keeps people trapped because... There's a lot of people that don't discern. They can't discern the difference. So, you know, when I was in the world, I could, I could get thousands of people. I could get thousands of people to jump, dance, sing, shout, clap their hands, just like we do in the church. Thousands of people. Thousands of people. Just like we do in the church. If somebody was to look at it, how, they, there's no way that you could tell the difference. And this was so important to me because I believe that real worship requires having a revelation of Jesus. So as we were crying out earlier, my goodness, I sense the Holy Ghost in here right now. As we were crying out and singing to Jesus, I believe it was so scripted. It was so prophetic, but I believe it was so scripted by the Spirit of God because as we cry out to him, God desires to make himself known. Amen. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. He desires to reveal himself. I believe that God actually, you know, the Bible says in, in Habakkuk to write the vision and make it plain right upon the tables. In some translations, it actually says the tablets of the heart or the tables of the heart. I believe that God actually wants to write the revelation of who he is upon our heart so that we can read it and run with it. Amen. Come on, somebody. 
And, and I believe that the, the main way that we do it is in our worship. I believe God wants our heart to be branded with the knowledge of who he is and a heart cry for him more than anything else in this world to the degree that we're willing to give everything up. We're willing to lay everything down so that we can be with him. Amen. When we get to that point, we're really entering into a a realm of worship that the devil is trying to keep us out of. Amen. Come on, somebody. It's why it talks about in the book of Revelation about the 144,000 that, that they have a song. They're purified. They, they had never been defiled by women. They were virgins. And they sing a song that nobody else can sing. They're singing a pure song. Now, what is that? Is it just about the 144,000? I understand from, from you know, an esch uh, eschatology standpoint what that represents. But I'm, but I'm saying that God actually has a designated people, hallelujah, that he wants to be pure in their worship and in the song that's being released, hallelujah, because it reveals him. So you know the Bible says in Amos that, my goodness, that he does nothing uh, in the earth without revealing his secrets to his servants, the prophets. It goes on to talk about how things God wants things to be published. If you look up the word published in the Hebrew, the word published, we, we only relate it to telling and proclaiming and writing books and getting the word out. But the word published actually is related to hear. It's, it's more related to our hearing more than anything else. So understand that the songs that we hear, if it's got the wrong spirit behind that song, come on somebody, it's like that thing is now being published on our heart, and then we're going to go and proclaim it. We're going to make that thing known by what we say and what we do, which is why God wants a purified heart, a purified motive when it comes to worship. That's what I love, that's what I love about Apostle Woods. When I first came to his church, I came from the music industry. I came from the music industry. When I first came to his church, I came a week prior, I was hanging out with a famous rap group. They, they were talking to me, invited me to their show, and talking to me about getting a record deal, how to get a record deal. There were things that were getting, connections that were being made. And then I came to his church a week later. And what I experienced sounded like what I was experiencing in the world, but it had a different feel to it. There was something about it that was pure. There was something about it that, that was different, and it made me feel different. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. It made me feel different, and it opened me up to receive Jesus. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I believe that worship, God wants to bring a designated people. Now, who are those people? Those people are the ones that have the revelation of Jesus Christ. Those people are the ones who are born again. You, it doesn't matter if you're young, if you're old, if you're male or female, if you're black or white, if you're rich or poor. It doesn't matter if you come from the country, if you live in the city. It doesn't matter if you speak English or you speak a, a different language. It doesn't matter who you are, where you are, if you are a born-again believer, if God has revealed himself to you by the Spirit of God and you've received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you are now qualified to be a designated worshiper. Hallelujah. A person that has been designated, anointed and appointed. Hallelujah. To be a, a sacrifice. Hallelujah. That, that, that is pleasing to the Lord as one who worships him. Amen. Not just one that sings a song. Not th that one that just plays the instrument, plays the keyboards, plays the drums, plays the guitar. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. But one that is in relationship with him. One that has, has a life that's set apart to be in communion with him. Come on. So that song that's being sung means something different. Amen. And I believe that this is going to attract a generation like never before. I believe that God has actually kept a realm of worship concealed in the earth for such a time as this. And I believe that he's taking the cap off. Come on, I believe that he's taking the limit off right now. Hallelujah, in this place. Listen, that's why there's not as many people here as normal. Just going to tell you that in the spirit. Because God always keeps things hidden. He's ahead of the enemy. He keeps things hidden. If they would have known, they wouldn't have crucified the Lord of glory.
Joseph told his brothers, what you meant for evil, God meant for good. He said, he sent me ahead. He sent me ahead so that many lives could be saved. God is choosing a place right now, right here. Hallelujah. That seems to be in obscurity. Hallelujah. To release and to reveal a realm of worship that's about to invade the earth like never before. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Here's the, here's the invitation. Will you be a part of the move? Will you be a part of the move? Listen, I know some of y'all are like, well, I, I just can't move like that anymore. I can't dance and move. Come on, listen, you can do something. You can do something, right? But can you do it with a pure heart? Is your heart pure? Is your heart pure? Is your motive pure toward the Lord? Amen. Do you want to serve him with everything? Do you want to love him with everything? If, if that's you and you're born again, you got his spirit, you carry the revelation of who he is, then you're qualified to be a worshiper. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You're qualified to be a worshiper. Let me tell you real quick what this is going to do. It's going to attract persecution. It's going to attract persecution. It's going to cause you to suffer some things. Right? The, the package that's presented nowadays is that we can win a Dove Award or the K-Love Award or whatever. Or we can get a, or we can get a Grammy. Amen? Let me tell you the kind of songs I wrote when I, was, when I wasn't saved. <laughs> How many, the gifts and callings of God <laughs> are without repentance. I wrote a song one time called Problems. I was like, it was like I got problems, controversies and conflicts. I got problems, but I want to be rich. I was prophesying because right after I wrote that song and recorded it, I mean, all hell broke loose in my life. You talk about problems. It was demonic. I wrote very demonic stuff, very stu stuff very dark about perversion. And I'm telling you the way that, because I, I actually thought music was going to be a way to get out of a deep depression. I said, I'm going to make, I have a tattoo on my arm, a face of the devil on my arm, and, and, it, and the name of it was one of my stage names, Brain Damage. I had a, a, I had a woman say, my name's Brian Dwayne. She said, she called me Brain Damage. I said, I'm going to make that name famous. I, I saw a video the other day of a young man who died recently, a rapper, who, who was saying that he sold his soul to the devil. And he died of a drug overdose shortly after. And when I was in Milwaukee meeting with that famous rap group, I knew that the devil was trying to draw me in. I had already made a deal with the devil. And that was the moment that the devil has set up to take me down a path. And here's the, here's the irony. I knew that within a year and a half, that if I would have gotten deep in with those guys, that in a, at least a year and a half, I was going to e either end up in jail or I was going to end up dead by a drug overdose. I knew it. See, these people, they're aware of the darkness that they're involved in. They're aware of it. And they're also aware that it's acceptable, hallelujah, to, to be saved and just to operate in your gift. Because when I got saved, I went and told everybody, I got to leave. I'm, I'm saved now. I can't do this anymore. And they said, yes, you can. Just do gospel. Just do gospel. Just compromise. But I chose. Now, and listen, let me tell you something. The, the, the first word I received after I received Jesus was don't stop the music. It's the first word I received. 
But I knew in my heart that, that I couldn't do the music the same way that I was doing it anymore. And that's why I thank the Lord that he connected me an apostle. That was a divine, that was a divine connection if there had never been one. That was a divine appointment if there had never been one. Because at the time, I didn't know that he had, that he had decided not to sing any secular song. And he didn't know that I came from the secular music industry. All I know is that I needed a father. And I didn't just need a father in the natural, but I needed a father in the realm of worship and music and this thing that God put on my life so it could be purified. Because once I gave my life to the Lord, I wanted to give him my gifts too. I wanted to give him the music. I wanted to give him the raps, the ability to write. I wanted to give him all of myself, not just me coming to church on Sundays and a Bible study during the week, but I wanted to give him my whole entire life and everything that came with how God made me. And what I would express through this life that he gave me, I wanted God to have it all. And I wanted it to magnify him. And I wanted it to put him on display. And I still want the same thing today. Amen? And not only do I want it for myself, but I want it for everybody that names the name of Christ. Hallelujah. And has departed from iniquity. Amen? The invitation has been made for us to come to the table and sit as a worshiper, as a son and a daughter that worships their heavenly father. Amen. Amen. Come on, give the Lord some praise. Amen. Amen.